So, oh, wait a minute, P6, from P6. This is, uh, we're finding the complex solutions to a quadratic equation, and then, come on. Wake up. There we go. It was asleep, it took a nap. So, finding complex solutions to quadratic equations, and ignore where it says quadratic formula. <laughs> you know how I feel about the quadratic formula. Shouldn't have to use for it if we know what we're doing. So, um, we've got this whole quadratic formula piece, and we do make use of one particular part of that quite a bit. And that's the discriminant, because the discriminant can tell us a lot of things. Uh, first off, we've talked about how if it comes out to be a perfect square, then we know our quadratic is factored. And we should go back and try to factor it. But it also will tell us, and I mentioned this yesterday, whether or not we're going to get any real solutions, if we're going to get one real solution or two real solutions. So if you're graphing something and you're saying to yourself, I don't think this is going to work, then you can always check the discriminant and see whether or not that's the case. So for a quadratic equation, ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. We're used to that, that's standard form. a, b, and c are real numbers, and a is not equal to 0. Well, if a were 0, we wouldn't have a square, and it would be a line. It wouldn't be a quadratic. If the discriminant is positive, two real solutions. Should find those two distinct, what we mean by that is two different numbers solutions. Um, because we do remember to call those zeros that happen when our parabola hits the x axis a tangent, but they only really can come from one answer. And then if b squared minus 4ac equals zero, there's one repeated real solution. And that's the situation of the tangent where the parabola is. And then b squared minus 4ac comes out to be less than 0. Well, then we don't have any real solutions, but we do get a pair of imaginary solutions. So up until now, we've had said if there aren't any real solutions, just let it drop. But then we spent all this time talking about imaginary solutions. So now, at least in this section, we are going to try and find them. Well, what are the imaginary solutions that we're looking for here? So this one down here says solving a quadratic equation. So the graphs in our ways for those of you that haven't started the computing and square worksheet yet. And I look at this and I think, well, that's ready to go. I mean, look, it's a standard form. It has a zero on one side. So the first thing we would try would be the factor. That's always what we try. There's no greatest common binomial factor. So we look at this. Oh, maybe it's a perfect square or something or other. This is x squared and this is 1 squared. Let's see, x times 1 doubled. Oh, that's 2x. That's not what I see in the middle there. Okay, that is not a perfect square trinomial. Then we realize two numbers multiply to 1 and add 1. Then you have a half. It isn't. So then next method down would be computing the square. And to do that, we're going to move this one out of the way. This didn't work. No, that, that was not. Then we try to figure out, well, what should we come up with for ax squared plus bx plus c to add to both sides? How do you get it again? b over 2 squared. Okay, so our b is 1. So that means we're taking 1 half and we're squaring it. Can I distribute that power? That's division in there. Whenever it's pure multiplication or division, we can distribute. 1 squared is 1. 2 squared is 4. So we're going to add a nice little 1 fourth to both sides. And here's the realization that we're going to have a factor solution. How do you know that? Negative 1 plus 1 fourth. That's going to come out to be a negative 3 fourths. And we're going to have to take the square root of that and try to find the real square. So we will have imaginary solutions here. And then we say, hey, we just made it a perfect square trinomial. x times x gives me x squared. What? And now I need to figure out what did I square to get that one for? Oh, wait. Yeah, it's right over there. You know, as part of your work of b over 2, you're going to be able to take a peek over there and say, hey, I already did that. I know what that is. Well, it looks like that. What's next? 
square root. So x plus one half equals, uh oh, plus or minus. Now we're breaking apart. We know the square root of negative one is an i, so that's going to go back here because we want this in standard form. Square root of three, something nice. Something we can simplify. Well, let me just leave it the square root of three. How about the square root of four? Oh, that's good for us. No radical. Subtract the one half exactly. That is what we have to do. So x equals negative one half plus or minus the square root of three over two i. And as the little chart said, well, we've got an imaginary number, and basically it's constant. They're very well. They always can get close. They are close. They always get close. Because we always want real number part, imaginary part, and then I in the back. From now on, we're going to use all three of them all up instead of the quadratic formula. After this chapter, we will not use the quadratic formula anymore. We will always use the three. So will we find I? Claire, I think there's maybe two more sections in this book where we actually even talk about imaginary numbers at all. And again, that's. We're supposed to be talking about application. And in the real world, we have no use for imaginary numbers. So we'll just talk about it. That's all. So we can have solving a quadratic um, that had imaginary solutions. So 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. How do you feel? All right. Looking good. So off we go to the next section. I like this. Not that I don't like any other sex. I like everything we do, but let me do like this section. There's a lot of connections to um, past learning in here that that maybe have just kind of been on the cusp of your memory, and we're going to yank them back in and say, yeah, yeah, I don't want to do this. So solving inequalities algebraically and graphically, we will be able to solve absolute value inequalities. That's a tough thing in algebra, too. When we first learned that, Solve quadratic inequalities. Whoa, 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 whoa. We've solved quadratics before, but inequalities? Super cool. Just wait for this one. Approximate solutions to inequalities. Graphic calculator. You know, sometimes we just have to do that. Write and solve problems involving projectile motion. Not much, a little bit, a little bit. Okay, so now, on the graph of y equals x squared minus 4, we're going to start by saying, okay, let's remember what these are going to look like. What are the values of x for y equals x squared minus 4? We'll lie below the x axis. Okay, so back in algebra 2, we said use the parent function, y equals x squared, and it got to the point where we didn't need to make all the time, but it's been a little while, it's really rusty. So we put in numbers like negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and realize, hey, when you square that, you're going to get 9, 4, 1, 0, 1, 4, 9. Okay, so that's our standard parabola, parent function. We're going to graph that. I'm going to show you this one here. Now that one, that is not my final product. As we learned, whenever you have one that's not going to be your final answer, you either do dots or dash, you know, whatever you want to do. But we need to remember that that's what our parent function for parabolas is. But this one got minus 4 in the back. And it's not in parentheses. Because in parentheses, then it's a whole right and left shift, and we have to flip backwards. But this is just a minus 4 in the back. And that's four down. So all we have to do is take those points we just graphed and move them four down. So one, two, three. Oh, I got this line in my new one, isn't it? Like the red stuff. It's the eight over here. Just kind of 
Why don't you grab a highlighter or something with some color? Got the bag there if you don't have anything else. We're going to color code this a little baby. So it says the solution of the absolute value of u is less than a. The absolute value of u is less than a. It's represented by the portion of the number line where the graph is below the graph of y equals a. Well, that makes sense. Here's a. On the blue absolute value graph, you say, well, where is it less than that? Another color. Oh, let's see what'll stick out. Purple. Okay. The solution of the absolute value of u is greater than a. And where would our y values end up being bigger than a? Well, here's a. This is the stuff where it's bigger. Shading what? No. No, not shading inside. I know what you're thinking is a mess of something you're making. So that's where we're going to find those values. And again, like I said, it's a little bit different thinking as to what we did in Algebra 2, which is what Ken was just asking. But what we're going to do is we're going to figure out what intervals this is working on. We're not necessarily trying to shade the whole thing. We're explaining where the x's are going to end. So, quick reminder. If we have to use or, we're not going to write down the word or. We're going to talk about it as the union of two sets. So, if it says A union B, that is really saying it belongs to A. All right, so we've got our thinking started about this, and what we have to do now is go back and think, okay, so what does this mean for me here? If the absolute value of x minus 4 is less than 8, I'm at 0 on the number line. That means 8 and negative 8 is this way and positive 8 is this way, and it's all the stuff I could grab because the distance is less than 8. That's going to be an answer. So x minus 4 has to be between negative 8 and positive 8. That's what that's going to get you to think. Well, that's not so hard to solve. We're just going to add 4 all over the place. So, between negative 4 and 4. We would like to get that. How do we write that in the notation again? Yeah, just parentheses. Could we see it graphically? Absolutely. We could graph the absolute value of x minus 4. We could do that. And the graphing calculator does it for goodness sake. So we could graph that absolute value of x minus 4. And it's just our normal graph of y equals the absolute value of x, but it's translated for the use of the Now, this is our cutoff. 8 is right here. And they wanted us to know when is it less than 8. Well, pretty obviously. It's less than 8 right here. Well, where is right here? Between my x's of negative 4 and 4. So there it is. So this is just putting what we did in Algebra 2, which is this piece, together with a visual. And saying, okay, when we think about what's really going on here, here's my cutoff, this is the lower end. So when we get to quadratics, things will go a little bit easier. Now this one says the absolute value of blah, blah, blah. Literally, I don't even need the 3x minus 2 part. The absolute value of something is greater than or equal to 5. So I'm standing at 0, and I realize if I go out 5 this way, I can't reach the stuff that's greater than 5 the next way. And if I go out 5 this way, again, I can't reach it because it's going forever. So that's going to be my or situation. So either 3x minus 2 is going to be less than or equal to negative 5, or 3x minus 2 is going to be greater than or equal to 5. Think about how the error is 
show us what's going on with your world. So if you keep the negative on the left, we are always praying for the world to get strong as I am right now. Which would be the super world numbers and the super world numbers. That would be a real world, right? Because we have to solve them like they're two separate equal quantities. But we'll add two. And then divide by three. The both of them. So either x is less than or equal to negative 1, or x is greater than or equal to 7 halves. Now let's think visual. This is absolute value, 3x minus 2. And in fact, there is a um, horizontal stretch here that you guys haven't even come to before. We will as we go further this year. So if we graph the absolute value of 3x minus 2, this is what it looks like right here. We want to know when is that greater than or equal to 5. Well, here's 5. That's what's greater than or equal to 5. In fact, exactly here is greater than or equal to a 2 because it's equal to and that's 5. So that matches the 5. Now that's what we get if we're writing this in an equality notation. But we know, step up, we want to do interval notation. We haven't talked about it for a few days, but this is what we use that lesson. How are we going to represent x is less than or equal to negative? Negative infinity to negative 1, union, again, we don't know why, 7 what? 7 halves, parentheses or square brackets? Oh, thank you. Yeah, I do that every once in a while. I blame that on the electric fence when I was a little kid. Because someday when you're a little kid, you're on a dairy farm, we always have electric fences for the cows. And there's that one day when you're just a little too tall. You've always been able to get under the electric fence nice and easy. But there's that one day when you go to get under the fence and it's <laughs> right in the back. Just for dreams. That's what I got out of that. There we go. A little synapse problem because of the fence. All right. So negative infinity to negative 1, square brackets because we want to include it, and then 7 thirds infinity. But again, the visual is what we're supposed to get out of this as we work towards quadratics and we start thinking, okay, how can we do this? But I do want to point for you one zero to real quick on that part about the circle ball caps and dots. I'll do it in the back. I can do that over here. Let's see. Do it over here. Do that a little bit. Okay. Looks like we feel a little confident with some practice. We'll get some practice in there. Uh, but less than, than sandwich, greater than, or. All right, we will need to be able to solve quadratics. Y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. How do we do it? What's the first method we would love to be able to use for all of them? Factoring. We would hope they're all factorable. They're not. Yeah, extracting the square roots. I'm just going to put tape to the square roots so I'm not using all kinds of fancy language. I suppose they're nature bolt for extracting. Don't take the square roots. Doesn't work, then what? Completing the square. We forget how to take uh, how to do completing the square, and we're taking the ACTs and the MCAs back up. I like how I'm even writing it separate over here. Like, don't do this. This is the good stuff, but we have to. There's our backup plan. Okay. So those are the same methods we're going to use. Where does this cross roots and quadratic formulas cross into each other? After this chapter, when you're absolutely going to use the quadratic formula, absolutely. Yeah, we have to see completing the square process. Because again, what we're doing is we're getting you ready for the level of math that you need to calculus. Alrighty, we're going to solve x squared minus x minus 12 is greater than 0. Now, here's my first thought. My first thought is, I got myself a parabola. My parabola is going to open up. I know that because it's squared and then we can pull up the 
situation is positive. But I see this negative business here and I tell myself, this is probably dipping below the x-axis. It's, it's probably going to happen. That's, that's just what it is. So what they want to know is, when is it greater than zero? So I'm trying to figure out these pieces right here. Well, to do that, it would be really great to know these two numbers. This two x and this x. Those are the zeros. That's what we've always been finding. So what we do is we kind of pretend that it's x squared minus x minus 12 equals zero. And we say, hey, I wonder. So we can find the endpoints that we need for our intervals because we know that this would be 4 and this would be negative 3. We know that. Now, I should say how to solve the original inequality because the original problem of the inequality is greater than the total variance of the x from this graph. Let's just go, oh, it does say, now write your solution in interval notation. I almost hate to have to use this as the inequality because we want to have our notation. But look at it this. This is an or. That's not something that's between. This is between because it's between these two pieces, but we want this to be greater than zero. So we're going to need our x's to be less than or equal to negative three or greater than, oh, not equal to, x is less than negative three. This one has to be above because it's greater than zero. They could, I mean, and they will be in a moment, some of them will be less than, some of them will be greater than. Okay. 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 When we are trying to figure out when this is greater than zero, we are looking for this part and this part. When we go out in this direction, remember we're going to be squaring. So when we square something, we will get some positives that go up this way. So anything that's above, any of our y values that are above 0 are going to be able to do this. It's going to be greater than 0. So whenever we're talking about quadratics, this is the part down here that's less than 0. Because this is where we're exactly at 0. Right here. And these are above zero and these are below zero. Caitlin? Question? No? Kevin? Okay. And Helen? Yes? No. Okay. Here's why. What if our parabola is upside down? Then greater than would be an and. So that's why the visual is so important. If it opens up, yes, you can remember it as an and. If it opens down, then you have to reverse your thinking. It's just one of those things. As we move over here, those are negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6. Those type of numbers is what's going to get squared. That's going to give us y values. And then over here, these values will also give us those y values that we need to know. Okay, so let's put this in interval notation. X is less than negative 3. Interval notation. So every one of these is different, but really it's based on is your parabola opening up or is your parabola opening down? And yeah, that's just the graphic calculator. It's the same as my SketchUp thing. What's important to us is let's figure out where those zeros are and then think through when are we above it and when are we below it. So in the next example, use the inequality less than or equal to.
how will this affect our solution? We're going to have to go back and we have to review those. So solving another quadratic inequality, steps are the same. Kind of think through it and say to yourself, if I were to put this on one side, that's still an up opening parabola. It's squared, degree two, and it has a positive leading coefficient. Now with that minus 20 in the back, yeah, it's probably going to dip below my x-axis. I don't know exactly where, but I just want to sketch it. Up. So to find exactly where, first I'd like to get rid of that too and make this nicer, but we can't. Secondly, I have to try factoring and I realize there's nothing special about this. So then I just go after it. I say, can I think of, because 2x and x, that's the only way we're going to get the 2x squared in the front. Can I think of a way to put in some factors? Negative 20 that would end up giving me 30. How about 8 and 5? 2 times 4 and 10. Now, how do you get that? Well, we definitely could go back to writing down 1 and 2, 2 and 1. And then realizing 1 and 20, that's not going to work for 3 in the middle. So negative 2 and 10 um, to a negative 10, negative 4 and 5, 4 and negative 5. But what I just did was a little trial and error in the brain to figure out what would be best to give it a try. So what's my 0 for this one? 5 halves. 0 for this one. Here's my negative 4, and here's my 2 and a half, 5 halves. And this one is less than or equal to 3. So I want to know what is this below the x-axis. So that's this stuff down here. Now this doesn't break. This is continuous. From here to here, there is part of the graph right there in the blue. So this one is going to so with this one, we'd say, well, it has to be between negative 4 and 5 halves. Okay. So that's where we see that's actually dipping below the x-axis, the blue portion of our graph. So should we use the solutions above or below? This told us what? Below. Because below. And then... Let's go to the interval notation. How do you write x is between negative 4 and 5 halves? Use the brackets. You have to do one with the interval. And again, this is just the graphing calculator vision of, of what I have in the sketch. Since um, it's always greater than or equal to 0, is there any way where you could have it less than or equal or greater than or equal to 4, but only That's because we don't have our, our entire quadratic set either less than, less than or equal to, greater than, greater than or equal to. We're not going to break it up and reduce the squares. So yeah, it's always going to work together. Always going to work together. And remember with and, you always read inward out. So it's x is greater than or equal to negative 4 and less than or equal to 5 halves. So we're in from the center with the and. All right, so above and below, greater than above, less than below. In examples three and four, the quadratics were factorable. Woo! Not factorable. Again, what are the options? Extracting roots, completing the square, you put CTS. What else? Quadratic formula. None of them work. What if none of them work? We have to graph them. That's what we do. We just we have to approximate. So if we don't have a choice, it doesn't. 
does. If it's quadratic. However, the book is going to give you someone who will help you with the grade because they want you to be best for the grade. Now, again, I wouldn't want to have to draft that. I don't want an exact answer, but the book is going to make you actually find the best ones. So the accuracy agreement from section P5 told us that we can use the graphing calculator. We can. And write the endpoints of any, any intervals as long as we go to the three decimal places. That's, that's the best way. So sometimes you're going to see a calculator icon, and they're going to see it say, use it. Use the graphic calculator. It's just one of those things where in real life, you want to know where it is. Are we getting that close already? Are we getting there? Oh, OK. Well, like I knew it was shorter today. All righty. So x squared minus 4x plus 1 is greater than or equal to 0 graphic. So that's that's the deal right here. Solve it graphically. And like I said, they're going to put a little calculator icon. Because Hannah, I'm with you. I would want to use computing elsewhere and get it exact. But the book forces us to make use of the graphic calculator because you're not always going to get the final numbers. They give you indicators. They give you coordinates. You don't know how to factor all of those. And so you have to give up and say, all right, Graphic calculator, help me out here. It's not a process we're going to learn in here. <laughs> no, they're really, unless you have perfect cubes, so you have the difference of two cubes and um, the sum of two cubes. Even at college, I mean, what we do is we use synthetic and try to narrow down that search and you just need to put a number in there and try to get those exact ones. So in here, because we're talking about finding solutions, so x squared minus 4x plus 1. And we're supposed to solve it graphically. I don't know, we probably could just chuck a few numbers in there. <coughs> uh, certainly could use the graphic calculator right away. But yeah, they want us to use the GCS for that. I'll just go to it right away. So let's go here and graph. It was. x squared minus 4x plus 1. intersections. And yeah, now that I've laughed a little bit more, we're going to run short on time. But let's see if we can't get at least a few points in the table here. Uh, negative two again. So negative 213 gives us something to shoot at. Negative 
definitely haven't gotten a few mixed cordage that hit us up for the word problems. But I'm guessing some of these at the beginning are probably nice and factorable. So I'll give those a shot. We've got Monday and Tuesday for review. So we'll eat up 